Good morning. If you're in a small conference room, please mute your mic. You know, there's a lot of feedback from your mic. Okay. You know, I'm not sure where the noise is, you know, coming from in your room there, but it's a whole bunch of um, loud noise. Can you all see the present of the, the the agenda on the screen? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Yeah, we could see this, the presentation. Good deal. Thank you. Good, good morning. This is Jeff Tepsik. Uh, I'll be presenting today. Um, will I be sharing my screen or do you have the, the PowerPoint? Um, Mr. Tep, uh, Tepsik, if you can go ahead and uh, share your own screen and manage your own presentation, that okay. would be great. Can I give that a try right now to see, make sure it works? Absolutely. All right, great. Let me see. Uh... Is it showing the one with the notes or the other one? Um, I can see your PowerPoint presentation. Uh, make sure to maximize it the way that you have it maximized now, and um, it looks perfect. Okay, you can see now it's not the the note one, right? It's the normal one. Yeah, it's it's just the slides. Okay. That's on the screen. Do you need me to close that out now? Yeah, if you can, please. Sure. Thank you. Am I still sharing or is it off? Okay, good. Here we go.
Good morning. We will uh, go ahead and uh, wait a few minutes to uh, wait for others to join the meeting. We can. Good morning, Ms. Arrieta. I was having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties, and I was like, oh, I've got another meeting. I'm scared. I'm not we, gonna yes, we yeah. can see you and we can hear you. Um, I think we might have quorum uh, very soon. Um, we'll give it a minute or two just to uh, ensure that we have quorum, and, and then we'll get started. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good morning, Carmen. Long time no see. Do you remember me? I know. How's it going? I'm doing good. How you been? <laughs> it's good to see you. I, I, um, it's a new hairstyle, Jeff. Oh, I know. As I get older and I tell them to cut out just the grays and so they cut it all. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. It looks yeah. good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. I know it's hard to believe I've, I've, um, I've been here. I'll be here five years at EPISD in this may so yeah time flies i've got you know actually today will be my 19th year with the city of el paso awesome that's crazy yeah time flies congratulations it's awesome okay i think we might get uh we might have quorum already um so uh very quickly um i just want to make sure that the agenda is currently on the screen Yes, it is. Yes, okay, very good. So uh, I'll just make an announcement. Um, due to the pandemic, this is a video, video conference meeting to avoid congregate setting and physical locations in compliance with the requirement that the city provide two-way communication for members of the public. Members of the public may communicate with the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee regarding agenda items by call, calling the number listed on the agenda. Anyone from the public wishing to speak will be required to press star six to unmute themselves. And I do want to remind everyone to please uh, mute your microphones when not speaking in order to avoid background noise interference. Um, with that, I will go ahead and um, move to uh, call for quorum. I'll call roll call just to establish quorum. So starting off, uh, Commissioner Bard. OK, uh, committee member Mercer. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Committee member Soto. Hi, good morning. Good morning, sir. Committee member Moreno. Committee member Mark Barth. Okay. Committee member Valencia. Hi, good morning. I'm here. Good morning. Committee member Carnavel. Good morning. I am present. Thank you. Uh, committee member uh, Arieta Candelaria. I'm here. And committee member Murphy. I thought I saw him. I, yes, um, I can see him. Uh, Mr. Mr. Murphy, you are muted. I, can you hear me? Yes, yes, now we can hear you, sir. Thank you. OK, we do have quorum. I'll pass it over to uh, Chair uh, uh, Arieta Candelaria. <laughs> Yes, good morning. Thank you so much, Mr. Ortiz. Okay, well, so we've got an agenda here that we'll go ahead and get started. The first item on the agenda is discussion and action on the staff presentation and El Paso Water Utility Report on the Impact Fees Program. Hopefully you guys have had an opportunity to review uh, the document that they were so good to send. So um, who's going to be presenting? I'll be presenting. Uh, can I go ahead and share my screen? 
Yes, please. Okay, just one second. see. Can you guys see that? Yes, we can, Jeff. All right, well, yes. great. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jeff Tepsik. I am the Assistant Chief Financial Officer for the El Paso Water Utilities. Uh, unfortunately, Art Duran was not able to make it, so I will be presenting today. So I'll be reporting on the uh, report for the Water and Wastewater Impact Fee Program for the period of September 1st, 2020, through February 28, 2021. During the period, one new subdivision has been recorded with eight applications submitted, bringing the total subdivisions to 134, including 101 recorded and 33 in process. During my presentation, I will review the status of the capital improvements plan. I will review the impact fee collections. And as we're aware, a revised land use assumption and capital improvement plan was presented to the SEAC committee on January 9, 2019. City Council didn't consider the reports nor take any action during the reporting period. Now I'm going to cover the water impact fee CIP project from inception in March 24, 29 to uh, February 28, 2021. Through the inception through now 54 or almost $55 million has been spent on impact fee projects. Um, as you can see, we spent about 3.4 million on the Northeast Franklin distribution line, about 6 million on the North 2 tank, uh, 2A on the Northeast. Uh, the biggest project in this has been the 10 million spent on the East side planned service area. Now, just to show you some of the projects that are, are currently ongoing in the impact fee areas, uh, this is a North 2 boost, uh, booster station with a capacity of 11.8 million uh, gallons, uh, million gallons, and is under construction in the growing Northeast area. The Franklin distribution main is a 24-inch diameter water line to transfer water from the Franklin East one tank to the Vista del Norte development in the Northeast. We're going to uh, move on to the wastewater impact fee CIP projects. Uh, uh, life to date through the end of February, uh, EP Water has spent over $45 million, and the biggest project is the uh, Loop 375 interceptor system, uh, which we have spent over $33 million. Now looking at that project, here is a, a picture of the Pelicano sewer main extension, um, and this is an uh, improvement that will. Uh, serve the upcoming development on the east side of town. Okay. Since inception in May 2009 to February 28, 2021, over $14 million has been collected in impact fees. Uh, in the northeast area, we've collected $2.5 million. In the west side, approximately $5 million. And the, the largest or the most that we've collected is on the east side of town, where we've collected uh, $6.8 million. Just to summarize uh, what I went over, uh, we have one new subdivision that has been recorded and eight applications have been submitted. There are a total of 134 subdivisions that have been accessed an impact fee with 101 recorded and 33 in process. Okay, I did cover uh, the capital improvements that we've uh, done in the wastewater and the water section. I went over the 14 million that we've collected and uh, staff is working on updating the uh, the land assumptions and the CIP, and that will be presented at a future date. And with that, that concludes my uh, presentations. Is there any uh, questions at this time? Um, are there any questions from the committee? Thank you. I do have a question um, and just a, maybe a housekeeping item. So on the backup documentation that we received, I just wanted to make a note um, that on our documentation, it said on the second bullet, if you'll bring that back up, please, on your presentation. Sure, go ahead and do that. It did say that uh, 134 total subdivisions, 101 recorded subdivisions, and it should say 33. Our, pre oh. our presentation has 31, so just a little. Sure. Uh, there. And I think, uh, I think there was a revision that was sent uh, by Mr. Duran after the uh, that we caught that typographical error, but uh, we will go ahead and note that. And thank you so much for that. 
All right, I'm going to miss that. So if you go back to the water projects, uh, the impact fee CIP projects, just to, I'm clear on the, the, that I understand when I was reading this. So for example, uh, you, uh, slide number three. Are you, is this the slide you're referring to? Uh, slide number three. One, two, three, this is the third slide. Um, okay, I'm, that looks like the first slide. Am I not? Um, not, am I not? Can you hear me? It's still showing the first slide. Okay, let me. Uh, is, is it moving? Is I'm moving it forward? No. no. You Mr. know what? Share, unshare, and then put it back up. Okay, let's try that. And while you're doing that, I think one of the things that I noticed on that slide, if you look at like the second one, North 2 Tank 2A, um, it says total project cost 3.6 million, um, and then project cost to date is 5.9 million. Is that because the project's over budget, or uh, was that the initial? And that's kind of the same for the next two projects. The project costs and the project cost to date are different. Are the, um, is that because, like I said, are they, sure. are they over budget or, or what does that mean? Uh, Adriana, are you in the line? Do you want to respond to that or do you want me to respond? I can respond to that. Uh, Adriana Castillo with El Paso Water. The impact fees uh, were um, enacted on 2009 so the projected total cost that you see right there are the original costs that were put on the CIP actually we had an update in 2014 so those numbers could be the 2014 updates that's when we have time to update the land use assumptions and the CIP and of course they are already six years old numbers by this time by the time we were doing the construction okay so you so so you're saying the uh, the total project cost was the original cost and then by the time that the project was finished and finalized or it's in the process because um, it's still construction so you have total projects to date um, what is going to be the final cost of that and then where are you all getting the funds for to fill the gap the Funds are, um, and Jeff can assist me with this, are already in our CIP, anticipated in our CIP. What we do when we collect the impact fees is kind of paying back. So the, the funding is there, and the impact fee is supposed to, over time, we collect to pay for that infrastructure. Okay. Yes, that's, yeah, I, 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 go ahead. Maybe uh, updated cost or something. I mean, to me, it like, either over budget or or the original budget wasn't updated so i think it would be helpful to understand you know what is going to be the total cost uh, because these projects appear to be still under construction and um we're still going to have all these costs that, that the project's yeah, not going to and i think carmen if i may add is uh you know those are the estimated costs we can't change them because that's what was presented uh when we did the land assumptions oh, okay. I, I know we did submit you know, revised uh, budgets and reports that weren't approved by city council. So we were kind of, you know, we can't make changes. We, we try to make changes, but it's kind of in limbo. Okay. So of course, when you're doing your land assumptions and project costs, you know, you know, we've, we've seen how the prices have increased, right? For raw materials and everything. So, um, but we do, you know, in our yearly CIP process, you know, we have to fund these projects. As you can tell, we've already spent close to $100 million and we've only collected $14 million in the impact fee. So, I mean, that's just supplementing the, uh, you know, those projects on the back end, but we do fund them through our CIP. So those those increases in costs are funded uh, by EP Water. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Um, and then I, my last question is that the, um, the CIP that was presented um, to the committee um, last year in January, and then um, is I thought City Council was required or supposed to approve those reports. 
uh, why didn't they approve the report? You know, uh, Carmen, I'd have to get some more information from Art. Okay. I know these tax fees are, are very political when, when we try to increase the rates, you know, to pay for this. It's, uh, you know, we get a lot of, you know, it, it's it's a cost to the to the contractor. So I, I can't attest to why city council didn't take action on that. That would probably be something from the city, but I, I can try to see what information I can get from art. But uh, like I said, I can't uh, attest to something on that one way or the other. Okay, um, because we did approve the, the last report was approved uh, the semi-annual report for the reporting period uh, from 3120 to 83120 20 at our last meeting. And I'm just wondering if, you know, my understanding is that those move forward, I thought, to city council. Well, that, that not yeah, that's something different, Carm uh, Carmen. What well, they approved is the report, right? So I'm presenting on the report of the expenses. What I was referring to is there was, I think it's every five years they have to look at the, uh, it was a land use assumptions and improvements that was presented in 2019. So that's not on the report that I'm reporting on now, which is the expenses and the impact fees. That was a report to change the amount of impact fees that were, you know, we would be charging and different projects that they would be working on. So those are two different items. Okay. Okay. I just, I would, I just want to make sure that they are at least being presented to, uh, to city council. Um, I, you know, I don't know why uh, they wouldn't at least approve the receipt of the report. So I guess that was kind of yeah, a question. I, I think we have a hand up, uh, Mr. Ben Camavel, is that how I say it? Did you have a comment, sir? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Ben Cornavalli. I've, I've got a question. Uh, you have here on the presentation that there's 33 subdivisions in process. So I guess this is really probably a question for the city more than you. Um, is there a, a link or something where we can go see the actual location on a map where these subdivisions are at to get a, uh, a better idea of what we're dealing with as far as these the sprawling that continues to happen or and, and associated with that, who are the developers associated with these particular uh, uh, subdivisions as well? Sure, this is uh, Nelson Ortiz with Planning and Inspections. Um, we do have a GIS viewer for developments in process. Uh, our IT department usually uh, in coordination with our internal GIS planner, uh, they uh, keep track of that viewer. Um, so it is available for the public. I can go ahead and email you the link uh, after the meeting. Um, with regards to the developers, you know, um, it, it there's an, a, a whole list of, of different developers that submit applications to the city. Um, so uh, if I can, um, mm -hmm. uh, Ben, I, there's on your, in your report uh, that was provided as part of the backup, uh, there's a page, um, if they're not numbered, um, but let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, page five is the subdivisions in process and the subdivision name uh, and area. But to your question as far as the, who the developers are, that's not provided. And I don't recall yeah. it's been provided yeah. because yeah, there, no. are multiple, there are probably multiple uh, contractors associated with each of these subdivisions right Do you see that? yeah i see the list i see the list yeah. and i see you know i guess here the where you know i see the lots total lots um but that gis map i guess is really uh something i'm looking forward to seeing and yeah, uh, the developers i mean yeah i get it there's multiple <clears throat> i was just curious to see and one of the things a lot of people tend to ask in the public when they see these new developers is i mean new developments is well who's that uh, who's that belong to who's putting money there and, and 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 how did that come about and so that's a question i usually get from just general people i talk to about uh expansion of the city uh, 
uh, how it's been growing as far as land land size. And so that was just a question I had. Perhaps there's some uh, prominent developers or contractors that are that are consistently involved. <clears throat> and that that's just a question that I was I'm trying to get an answer to. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you guys understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah, um, I, I I do understand, Mr. Uh, Carnival. Um, if if you if you would like um, uh, most all of the the majority of the subdivisions, uh, not all of them, but the majority of them do go before the city plan commission for approvals. Um, some of them do not because they're administrative, right? But but those uh, the majority of, the, uh, of them do. Um, when we do take them before the city plan commission, um, we create a staff report. Uh, the developer, the applicant, uh, they're all uh, referenced in the report. And you're welcome to follow uh, our city plan commission meetings. They are held um, every other week. And so that would be a way for, for you to uh, uh, be informed of who the developers are uh, behind these subdivisions. Of course, we also make presentations to the CPC with regards to each specific development. Um, now, before the City Plan Commission, the, the city does not publicize the, the names of developers for, for these subdivisions. Um, you're always welcome to submit an open records request to determine uh, who the developer is. Um, once I send, perhaps once I send you the viewer, um, if you find a particular development that you're interested in, knowing more information, uh, certainly you can reach out to me, and I can provide you um, uh, the details that that you need with with respect to that particular development. But we don't. Well, prior to CPC, again, we don't we don't publicize the names of of developers. Okay, that's 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 uh, that's satisfactory. Thanks, Nelson. Appreciate it. Thank you. And then another point that I'll make regarding that viewer. Um, so um, it, it, it doesn't only include uh, subdivisions in process. It also includes zoning applications in process. And it's not just uh, in areas within the impact fee. It's throughout the, the, the city of El Paso as well. OK, that's actually a good bonus. So, all right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. That was a great question. OK, um, so if there's no other question, no other hands up that I can see, um, I will entertain a motion to accept. Um, uh, Carmen? Yes. Carmen? Uh, Carmen, this is Manny Moreno. I wasn't able to join video or something wrong with my computer. Uh, the only thing I, I've been listening to all the conversation, the only thing I want to uh, chime in is that I sat in the meeting, I think it was 2018, or 2017, I'm, I'm trying to remember, 2018 probably, when the request for rate in increase was, was uh, presented. And I think one of the reasons why the city council didn't, didn't uh, at least I passed it on to my representative, is there were a lot of discrepancies in the way the rates were calculated. I've got the history, I got my markups that I did and everything else. We submitted a list of 11 questions, and there were a lot of discrepancies as to how the rates were calculated based on the projections, at what time, this and that, and everything else, and then I think that led to one of the reasons why the city council did not take any action on that. Okay. Oh, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you for that background. That's very, very helpful. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and entertain a motion to uh, accept the staff's presentation and the El Paso. Water Utility Report on Impact Fees Program for the period of 9-1-20 through 2-28-21. Yeah, I'm motion to accept. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Thank you. It's been moved and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Um, is there any nays? Okay, report has been accepted. Um, and then item number two is the filing of semi-annual reports is required under Chapter 395 of the Texas Local Government Code with respect to the progress of the Capital Improvements Plan report to the El Paso City Council. Any perceived inequities in implementing the plan or imposing of the impact fees. The report for the period of 9 20 through 2 28 21. 
Are there any questions or concerns with regards to this report or to this filing? All right, no. well, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve this item. Do I have a motion? Thank you. Is there a second? This is Shane Mercer, I second. Okay, thank you. All right, all those, um, all those in favor, favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. And any opposed? All right, item passes. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the approval of the minutes for the CIAC meeting of November 5th, 2020. Uh, hopefully you've had an opportunity to review that. Are there any changes or corrections to the minutes? All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the item. I make a motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and second. All those in favor to approve the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 I vote aye. Any nays? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Carmen, this is this is Shane Mercer. I abstain. I wasn't present at the meeting, so I'll abstain. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Please note that for the record, um, Mr. Ortiz. Yes, ma'am. We'll do. Okay. Um, and that's there's no other items on the agenda. Uh, the only thing that I would ask, um, Nelson, uh, one thing is for in future, maybe we could add a public comment item to the agenda. Um, you know, typically, I, I'm not sure that uh, I know that we can, I guess, and members of the public can uh, comment. It's always nice to have a, an agenda item uh, on there just to remind us to maybe do that. I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but if you look into that for us. Yes, ma'am. We'll, we'll coordinate with our uh, the city attorney's uh, office to make sure that that is a, a, an item that could be on the next agenda and agendas moving forward. Thank you. And uh, I'm sorry, one more thing I forgot. I don't know if we need to reconsider, but there was a little typo. I, I, I forgot to give it to you. There was a little typo on the uh, minutes. Item number one, it should say discussion and not AD. I'm so sorry. I, I, had, I had looked over the minutes and I forgot in my haste to have the minutes approved. <laughs> so I don't know if we need to make another motion. Yeah, I think since the item did, um, a motion was already, uh, that item had already been uh, completed. I think if you want to reconsider it to, to make that uh, revision. Yes, um, um, I don't know. Can I make, a, I'll make a motion to reconsider the item, that, the minutes. Is there a second? Yeah, I second. This has been. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved and second that we reconsider the minutes for the November 5th, 2020 uh, meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, all opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay, moving And of to course, uh, uh, committee member Mercer abstained from that uh, again. Correct. Correct. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, so just a correction on the minutes. It should say item number one, discussion and action, not discussion AD. So I'll, uh, if there's no other changes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes with that revision. Can I get a motion, please? Yes, I make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, second? Second. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye. All opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. All right, well, that concludes the, uh, the meeting. Are there any other items to discuss, Mr. Ortiz? No, there are no other meetings. Uh, Ms. Arieta uh, Candelari, I will be sending you the report uh, via email um, for your signature uh, after this meeting. Okay, thank you all. Thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. Adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.